Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of chapter 37, Common Diseases and Condition. In this section, uh, we begin our discussion from the disease condition. Let's continue with multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a neurological disorder. It is called MS in abbreviation. It is a constant, persistent, but slowly progressive disease. Myelin, that's a coating in our nerve fiber. Myelin, which covers the nerve fiber. It's called myelin sheath. Myelin, which covers the nerve fiber, which covers the nerve fiber in the brain and spinal cord is destroyed. Let me give you one picture. It's like the electric wire covered by the plastic fiber. In the same way, our, fib our nerves in the brain is covered by the myelin set, myelin fiber, which gradually, persistently, progressively keeps on destroying, 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 slow by slow. And the result is, because of this destruction of the myelin fiber, nerve impulses Nerve impulses are not sent to and from the brain in a normal manner. It becomes abnormal. The normal functioning of the nerve fiber is totally impaired. There is no cure. This is very sad aspect of this disease. There is no cure. It's not curable. Symptom usually starts between the ages of 15 and 40 years of age. More women are affected than men. Onset. Onset means starting. Starting is gradual and symptoms vary greatly among the clients. The symptom depends in other conditions, other co-conditions as well. And sim symptoms are different among the clients. Let's talk about the sign and symptom of multiple sclerosis. Sign and symptoms depend on the damage area and it may include what it includes. Vision problem. When a person with a multiple sclerosis, the first sign could be vision problem. Person complains of complaints of double vision, problem in seeing the object. Muscle weaknesses in the arms and legs. See? At the, from the vision to the arms and legs, muscle weakens. Because of the muscle weakens, person has a difficulty in day-to-day -day function. Balance problem that affects standing and walking. Person cannot stand properly and walking is completely impaired. Tingling, pricking or numb sensation. It feels like it's not working at all. When you see certain part of the body, there is a tingling, pricking, and numb sensation. Numb means it looks like a dead. There is no sensation when something becomes numb. Difficulty speaking and swallowing. It's a cognitive function also impaired. Swallowing is the, it's the Physiological, when we eat something, we mix the food with saliva and we try to physically uh, broken in the foods into different pieces and swallowing becomes so much difficult because it is affecting the muscle of the neck as well. Bladder and bowel issue. Bladder means for the urination, people has a leakage of urine in their, in their uh, body and bowel means there is difficulty in using the toilet for the bowel movement. Diminished sexual arousal, that's another side effect. Pain, extreme fatigue, person is complaining of the tiredness all the day and person has a very, very sensitivity to the heat, cannot tolerate the heat. It's called heat intolerance. And like in the dementia and Alzheimer's disease, there is a short-term memory loss and person cannot make a good judgment. It's an impaired judgment. Multiple sclerosis continue. There is no cure. Support needs depend on the client's need and condition. 
prevent injury. This is our function as a support worker. We have to prevent their injury because there is no cure and symptom management. The medication is given for the symptom management. Promote bowel and bladder function for the bowel movement and for the urination bladder function we have to promote. We may have to use the um, pull-ups and the briefs. We do not say diaper. Diaper is for the babies. And eventually, the client may require long-term care because the client needs more and more care. The client needs more and more health care, uh, medical treatment for the symptom management since this is no cure. And the client, client needs more care, 24-7 type of care. And the client is uh, eventually sent to the long-term care homes because family members cannot look after, cannot provide all the care person needs. Another is a type of multiple sclerosis, which is called amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Amyotropic lateral, lateral sclerosis. A little bit difficult name, but we can practice it. Amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Amyotropic lateral sclerosis, ALS, attacks the nerve cells that control voluntary muscle. What are voluntary muscle? The muscle which moves without knowing they are moving. No, the muscle we control, we can move when we control it. Involuntary is, it is controlling, it is moving itself. Commonly called Lao Gehr, Gehring's disease, it is rapidly progressive and fatal because person, person's muscle, voluntary muscle movement is beyond the control. It attacks them. It usually strikes between 40 and 70 years of age. This is a most common age factor people are diagnosed with this type of sclerosis. Motor nerve cells in the brain, brain stem, and spinal cord are affected. Remember, this is a neurological disorder. Since it's related with the nerve cells and nerve fiber, it's a neurological disorder. That's why motor nerves in the brain and brain stem and spinal cord are badly affected. The nerve impulses are affected. First sign is difficulty using finger and hand. Person's finger and hands become dysfunctional. They cannot use them properly. And the result is total body change and person's lifestyle change. Progressing to difficulty walking. And finally, person becomes bedridden. Person cannot walk at all. We discuss about the spinal cord injury. It is another neurological disorder. This neurological disorder occurs because of the physical injury. The spinal cord injury can permanently damage the nerve system, nervous system. See here, because of the physical injury, the neuro, the, the neuro, the nervous system is affected. And below the injury, when there is a spinal cord, below the injury is immobile. It's not functioning at all. It's a permanent damage. A spinal cord injury is a permanent damage. That's why we have to protect our client from spinal cord injuries. Often caused by the motor vehicle accidents. We already discussed in the previous slides, MVAs. Problem depend on the amount of the damage to the spinal cord. How serious is the case depends on what is the amount of damage and the level of injury, what type of injury is that? What is the severity, seriousness, the degree of injury all about? The higher the level of injury, so what is the functioning after the injury of the spinal cord? It depends on the, the injury. The higher the level of injury, the more function lost. See, the higher the level of injury, the more function lost. Thoracic level or lower injuries, sensory and muscle function below the chest is lost. If the injury is thoracic level or lower injury, sensory mus and muscle function below the chest is lost. As I told you, it's called paraplegia. Below the in spinal cord injury, the, the, 
the sad part is below the injury it is totally paralysis and if the below the chest is lost the function below the chest is totally immobile it is called paraplegia and i make sure these are the terminology you will have to know and these will be the exam question for you i guarantee paraplegia what do we mean by paraplegia if the spinal cord injury causes the complete dysfunctional uh, label below the chest it is called paraplegia make the statement into question and answer the same statement with cervical injuries sensory and muscle function of the arms legs and trunk are lost it's called quadriplegia quadri means quarter from quarter uh, it becomes quadriplegia quadriplegia or tetraplegia with the cervical injury sensory and muscle function of the arms legs and trunk legs arms and trunk the majority of the part is lost it's called quadriplegia now the rehab is one option for the spinal cord injury people are put in the rehab people are taught about how to use different prosthesis to maintain the normal independence in life and which are also necessary for the survival box number 37.4 it talks about how we care with the people with the paralysis when they they have the spinal cord injury they go to the paralysis this paraplegia and quadriplegia and tetraplegia these are the name of paralysis another name please go through the eight point uh, page number 863 and you know how to work with these we have to help them in walking we have to help them in help them in personal care they are like they are sleeping like a log on the bed we have to transfer them we have to reposition them if we don't reposition them they will have other skin issue like uh, skin um, skin related disorder such as uh, pressure ulcer and loss of skin uh, condition intactness of uh, intactness of the skin now we are coming from the spinal cord injury to the cardiovascular disorder this all about the heart cardiovascular means the heart what are the disorder in the heart the system involves the heart and the blood vessel the cardiovascular uh, system uh, disorder it is it covers the blood vessel and heart cardiovascular disorder are the leading cause of death in canada people have a cardiovascular di disorder myocardial infraction what we call heart attack and so many other things the number one reason for the cardiovascular disorder heart problem is hypertension and another name for the hypertension is high blood pressure and the short form of high blood pressure is called htn see here htn 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 is hyper blood pressure hypertension or high, high blood pressure a condition hypertension is a condition in which the blood pressure is normal abnormally high what is the normal blood pressure Every, uh, do you know anybody it is universally accepted normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 yeah sometimes people have 100 by 70 that's okay sometimes it is called baseline sometimes a healthy person has blood pressure 110 by 80 100 10 by 70 that's normal for that person because at one level blood pressure is specific related with individual sometimes people's blood pressure is 140 by 90 could be normal for some of the people depends on what origin of the people african origin asian origin north american origin a european origin uh, and so on many things depend on and the blood pressure is called systolic pressure 140 mm hg or higher and diastolic pressure 90 mm hg um, millimeter of mercury mm hg means or higher the, the millimeter of mercury and um, it's if the blood pressure goes 140 by 90 it is considered high blood pressure must be a consistent high reading 
to consider somebody as a hy hypertensive, the, the uh, reading of the blood pressure must be consistent, means it should be stably high, continuously high. And box 37.5, page number 863, it says risk factor of hypertension. What is risk factor of hypertension? Can you tell me? It's a narrowed blood vessel because of the cholesterol. That's why people have to go to the doctors and check their blood pressure. Um, uh, there are so many causes of hypertension. Blood vessels become narrowed. Something is clogging the blood vessel, the arteries, and the blood pressure is, the blood is obstructed for the natural flow because of the cholesterol. High level of cholesterol, it causes that blood pressure. Kidney disorder, because of the kidney disorder, it kidney filters blood and because of the kidney disorder, the kidney also filters the unwanted um, uh, substances from the blood. If the kidney cannot work in a nice way, then the blood is full of the acidic, full of the carbon dioxide and acidic things. Therefore, the kidney disorder also causes hypertension. Another is head injury. Because of the head injury, people have hypertension. And complication of pregnancy. During the pregnancy, the woman feel more hypertensive and it is very dangerous for the mother and the baby as well. And the tumors. Sometimes certain tumors, the development of the muscle inside the body, it is also blocking the um, here um, the blood flow and it it becomes gives unnecessary pressure in the normal blood flow is impaired and it causes the hypertension sign and symptom of hypertension the first sign and symptom is headache blood vision vision changes sometimes people say something different double vision dizziness people feel always dizzy may not cause any sign and symptom sometimes blood pressure does not cause any sign and symptom but still the person is hypertensive often person does not know what he has high blood pressure whether he has high blood pressure or not person does not know therefore um, for us, for our own health also, we need to check our blood pressure. What's going on with our body? It's our primary duty. And we have to save ourselves, our families, and our clients. So when a person has a hypertension uh, or high blood pressure, what are the complications? What other complications it may cause? One is the stroke, cerebrovascular accident, which we already discussed about that. Another is a heart attack. It's called myocardial infraction, MI. Another is kidney failure. They, because of the high blood pressure, kidney cannot filter the blood and make the urine and all other things filtration. There are a big system in the kidney. It kidney fails. And person becomes blind because of that. In the retina, there is a... Uh, a retinopathy there are small blood vessels are in the retina because of the high pressure those blood vessels in the retina in the eyes they rupture they are broken there is a bleeding in the eyes the eye become very very red and person loses vision and person becomes permanently blind and what are the treatment of hypertension hypertension is preventable if it is because of the lifestyle and our food habit. Drugs that lower the blood pressure, we can go with the pharmacological measure also. Exercise, it's a non-pharmacological. Eat healthy diet, do physical exercise, work out, you keep yourself very healthy. Rest, you need very nicely, you have to take rest. Smoking, because of the smoking, the nicotine substances of the tobacco goes to the mind and it causes ather atherosclerosis. It is the blood arteries are blocked by those nicotine substances. That's why smoking cessation or stopping smoking is very important to prevent the hypertension or high blood pressure. Sodium restricted diet. Do not eat outside high sodium diet and eat only the healthy and very, very less sodium diet that helps the hypertension and low calorie diet. 
there are two types of diet. One is high calorie, one is low calorie. High calorie diet has low, low nutritional value. Low calorie diet with high nutritional value, that type of diet we need to eat. This is very important. Now another cardio, um, um, cardiovascular disease is coronary artery disease, which we call CAD, CAD, coronary artery disease. This artery, coronary artery, it feeds blood to the heart itself. It regulates blood to the heart muscle to make the heart muscle working, functioning. Coronary artery narrows and thicken and call atherosclerosis. This is a little bit uh, longer term word, atherosclerosis. It is the clogging of the coronary artery. One or half of the artery may be affected. When there is a coronary artery disease, one or half of the arteries are affected. Heart muscle gets less blood. Heart muscle is working very hard all the time. It never stops. If it stops, that's the tragedy. That is the tragic day of our life. That's why it is working all the time. It needs, it's like the gas for our cars. Heart, heart muscle needs all the time enough blood to function itself. So, if there is a coronary artery disease, heart mu muscle is not getting enough blood. It gets less blood. Fatty material collects on the arterial wall. When you eat a lot of fatty material, when you eat a lot of meat item that has a trans fat, and those fats are causing the coronary artery disease. The, uh, the arterial walls narrow and obstructs the blood flow. The wall of the artery the artery, the, the, thick, the artery becomes very thick and very, very uh, obstructive. If artery is blocked, if arteries are blocked, those coronary arteries, a permanent damage to the heart occurs. Once heart is permanently damaged, it is damaged forever. And what are the risk factors of the coronary artery disease? Let's talk about that. Gender more common in men. Men are always at high risk of coronary artery disease. Age more often in the older adult. When the person gets older, many things appear there. Many dysfunctions naturally happen there. Lifestyle factor, lack of the exercise. When people don't do the exercise, they have so many heart disease. Obesity, very, very big body. Smoking, definitely smoking is always the culprit. Excessive alcohol, when people drink wine and alcohol, they are high risk of coronary artery disease. High level of stress. Stress also another factor. High, high blood cholesterol. How often you go to the doctor and check your cholesterol? Ladies and gentlemen, please, I encourage you to check even your own cholesterol because it is very... Um, very dangerous for our own um, heart health. Hypertension, another is hypertension itself. Fa family history of coronary artery disease. This we cannot change because we inherit from our parents and uncontrolled diabetes. This is always the most dangerous disease, uncontrolled chronic diabetes. It may cause those diseases. Enzyme factories. Let's talk about the enzyme. Enzyme is the when there is a less blood flow to the heart, then it is called enzymal pain, and it is also called the chest pain. Another name for the enzyme is a chest chest pain. Chest pain from the reduced blood flow to the part of the heart muscle caused by the coronary artery disease. Remember that. And it occurs when the heart muscle needs more oxygen. Heart muscle is always working fast and continuous. It needs oxygen through the blood circulation, but it doesn't get oxygen because there is a lack of blood flow to the heart muscle. Physical exertion is the common trigger. When people have a more physical exertion, they may have the chest pain or angina. Emotional stress, when people are extremely Extremely sad or distress or stressful situation. Extreme cold also causes this. Extreme heat may be another cause for the angina pectoris or chest pain. Heavy meals. Sometimes people eat heavy meals. They have a heart failure, heart, heart attack or heart failure. 
alcohol because of the alcohol it also impairs the heart functioning smoking can also trigger these angina the chest pain sign and symptom of angina pectoris when because when somebody has an angina it's called anginal pain or angina pectoris or the beautiful word is the chest pain the chest pain the chest pain is always dangerous chest pain is a tightness in the chest heaviness in the chest there is a very very severe pain pressure in the left side of the chest see pressure in the left side of the chest pain may radiate to the other side this is called radiation of the pain please go to page number 864 and read how the pain radiates to the side from the chest pain it the pain goes to the shoulder and it goes to the spatula the back pain sometimes it goes to the lower back pain it depends on which side maybe pale feel faint and respire means the person feels sweaty dyspnea means difficulty breathing when person has a difficulty breathing when person has an anginal pain one sign could be dyspnea difficulty breathing is breathing is common rest of rest often relieve symptom in 3 to 15 minutes and minutes and it reduces the need of oxygen when person has a chest pain there is a nitroglycerin um, medication given for the chest pain treatment for the pectoris angina pectoris nitroglycerin is given this is a oral medication but given under the tongue to relieve the anginal pain it's a tablet or ointment patch or spray usually we see the nitroglycerin spray or patch in the long-term care home you will see so many nitroglycerin ointment patch uh, i mean the patches in the in the client's chest you have to take it nitro 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 free night it is called nitro free night we have to take the nitroglycerin patch during the night time always remember that if client has taken maximum amount and it still has no relief of pain call 911 and call your supervisor and manage to send the client to the hospital emergency because it is all about the heart disease and it is life threatening for everybody another is called myocardial infraction or mi what do you mean by myocardial infraction Myocardial infraction caused by the lack of blood supply to the heart muscle, ischemia. It's called ischemia. Atherosclerosis, beautiful terminology, atherosclerosis and thrombus obstructs because of the high cholesterol, blood flow through the artery. Area damage may be small or large. If it is large damage, it is life-threatening. Small damage, still person need uh, uh, prompt treatment sudden cardiac death can occur when person has a myocardial if infraction cardiac death occurs and person dies cardiac death means death of the heart one or more sign and symptom of myocardial infraction i please go to page number 865 there are the sign and symptom of myocardial infraction read all of them Treatment for the myocardial infraction. What are the treatment modality? Emergency care immediately. When somebody is suspected of having the myocardial infraction, the person must be sent to the hospital uh, emergency. Emergency care immediately. Person have to show the effort to relieve the pain. Pain management is the priority there. Stabilize the vital sign. What comes in the vital sign? The first thing is a blood pressure, another is a oxygen level, another is a heart rate, another is a respiration. That person is given oxygen and oxygen, giving oxygen makes them easy for the breathing and calm the person, no disturbance around the person in the emergency room. After myocardial infraction, activities are increased gra gradually not all of the sudden because it is very dangerous for the client cardiac rehabilitation program the person with the after the myocardial infraction person is uh, encouraged to take part in different programs how to 
keep the heart healthy, something like that. And lifestyle changes, there must be lifestyle changes. For example, smoking cessation, no eating salty food, no eating meat item more, because that has a trans fat and saturated fat, and so many others, not drinking much alcohol, only eating low calorie, high nutritious food. Congestive heart failure. Heart failure takes place right side failure and left side failure. Did you he have you heard about this? Congestive heart failure (CHF) occurs when the heart cannot pump blood normally. Heart is the biggest pump. It is always pumping the blood. The left side of the heart is pumping the blood and the right side of the heart, it also pumps the blood to the to the lung, uh, to the lungs and uh, right uh, the left side of the heart pumps the blood out of the aorta and artery and arteriole and throughout the body the blood is um, um, pumped blood backs up and causes the congestion of the tissue the blood should be flow flowing in the arteries but it blood backs up it doesn't go and causes the congestion in the heart in the tissue and it is collected there in the tissue. Right-sided failure, right-sided failure of the heart blocks, blood backs up into the vena cava. It is the right side, biggest veins are vena cava, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, and into the veins. There is a pulling of the blood into the vena cava and veins. And what happens there? When the blood is pulled in the vena cava and the veins, what happens? These are the sign and, sim sign and symptom of right-sided failure. Very important, right-sided heart failure. Feet, ankle, swell, edema, neck, vein, bulge, and abdomen is congested with the fluid. The person's tummy becomes, the abdomen becomes so much big. And liver congestion, liver also feel congestion. It decreases liver function. When there is a congestion, there is a de decrease in the function. When it is um, congestion occurs in the lung, people have difficulty breathing. The left-sided heart failure. The left-sided heart failure, it blocks back into the lungs. The blood coming from the lung to the left side backs into the lung. Here, what happens is, when the blood is coming from the lung, it is blocks its back ups into the lung. Now, the respiratory congestion occurs. See here, respiratory congestion, difficulty breathing, as I told you. When person has a le left side heart failure, person has a difficulty breathing, it's called dyspnea. It's here, dyspnea. And increase sputum, person sputum person has a cough and some stuff come from the mouth coughing gurgling there is a chest sound is very very noisy sounds in the lungs means person has a lung sound there abnormal lung sound severe left side failure is pulmonary edema the lung has a edema there is a swelling in the lungs and death can occur when the lung is swelling occurs in the day, in the lung, person dies. Organs do not get enough blood because blood is collected in the lungs. That's why person dies. Treatment for the congestive heart failure. Sodium restricted diet. How, how much sodium you take in your diet? Please. It's your cardiac health, for the health of your heart, take less and less sodium. Oxygen, semi-fowler's position, there are two types of, there are many positions and put the plant in the fowler or semi-fowler position. It also means the sitting position. Weight daily, you have to take the weight of the person daily at the same time. Indicates the fluid buildup. If the person is swelling, feel fluid buildup in the body. Intake and output, INO, restricted fluids, person, you cannot give water for the person, good skin care, skin can break down easily, range of motion exercise, 
actually we are was we are just doing here all the uh, necessary intervention for the person who has this uh, congestive heart failure and we have to help the person with the transfer from wheelchair to the bed and bed to bed to the wheelchair ambulation means walking with the client in the hallway and elastic stocking when people go to the bed they are put the very stretchable socks it's called elastic stocking to decrease the uh, swelling in the leg arrhythmias arrhythmias have you heard about this word what is mean by arrhythmias abnormal heart rhythms is called arrhythmia what do you mean by arrhythmia it's abnormal heart rhythm may skip a beat or have extra beats usually not life threatening but it can be serious pacemaker pacemaker is a medical device it's a medical device implanted in the body to monitor the heart rate to monitor the heart rate and give small electric shocks to the heart to stimulate the heart muscle the pacemaker is a medical device it is put when person has a problem with arrhythmia means the person has a abnormal heart rhythms heart is always uh, making a kind of rhythm lub dub lub dub the heart rhythms is named as lub l u b lub d u b dub lub dub lub dub lub dub you can hear the lub dub sound of heart when uh, with the stethoscope that's why the doctors the nurses are checking the heart sound for the lub dub sound there people with pacemaker should avoid electric or magnetic field because electricity and the magnetic they can uh, contraindicate with the pacemaker because it is already a magnetic and electric uh, medical device now phlebitis is the inflammation of the vein in the leg especially the leg vein when you travel by aeroplane you may have certain type of uh, inflammation in the vein it is the inflammation of the vein occurs most often in the leg can be caused by the bacterial infection can be caused by the bacterial infection a chemical irritation trauma lupus a genetic condition sometime the um, sometime the trauma because of the injury sign and symptom is called the redness and warmth in the area pain and burning and swelling these are the phlebitis the inflammation of the veins especially in the legs thrombus thrombus is a blood clot as i told you when we travel by the plane the collection of the blood in our legs remains in the same place for the long time and it becomes a blood clot if it occurs a large blood vessel it will decrease the blood flow to the blood vessels because clot blocks the air the blood the pathway of the blood if it occurs in the small blood vessel it may stop the blood flow there can form as a result of the stroke because of the stroke it is heart which is head of the heart attack deficiencies in the blood clotting ability some people have a deficiency in the blood clotting ability and extended period of inactivity that's why i told you while traveling by the pain your leg will be inactive for 18 hours if you have a long journey to travel that's why you have to take some time aspirin the doctor will suggest you before you travel by pain ask the family doctor what type of medicine i should take a traveling blood clot is also called embolus see here embolus formation happens there a traveling blood clot might happen it is one part of thrombus similarly we are going to the lung disease here respiratory disorders what do you mean by respiratory disorder what happens to the lung this is the biggest life saver we intake the oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide the respiratory system is made up of the lungs and their airways the respiratory system brings oxygen means o2 
into the lungs and removes the carbon dioxide out from the body. Respiratory disorder interferes with the function and threatens life. Asthma. How to pronounce the word? Asthma. Word must be pronounced correctly. Do not say asthma. It's called asthma. The air passage narrows. In the lungs area, the air passage narrow is called dyspnea or difficulty breathing. Proximal dyspnea is an intermittent spasm of the shortness of breath. When people have asthma, there is one type of proximal dyspnea occurs. Another is allergy, exercise, cold, smog, and emotional stress are common causes of asthma. What are the common causes of asthma? Allergy, exercise, cold, smog, and e emotional stress are common causes of asthma. Episode occurs suddenly, asthma attacks. When sometimes asthma attacks happens, person has difficulty breathing and a person falls, person becomes so much panic. Wheezing, shortness of breath, coughing, rapid pulse, perspiration means the sweating occurs and the cyanosis person becomes blue because of the lack of blood circulation, oxygen, lack of oxygen in the blood, blood becomes blue color, it is called cyanosis, and the person is called cyanotic. Very frightening, it is very, very frightening condition. Fear makes attack even worse because of the fear. Asthma continue the treatment, the medication are used to prevent or lessen the attacks, Emergency room treatment may be necessary because it is a life-threatening condition. Repeated attacks can damage the respiratory system. When the person has a repeated uh, persistent attack, it may damage the lung and other area there. Pneumonia. Again, the spelling says pneumonia, but we pronounce the word only pneumonia. P is silent. Pneumonia. What is the another lung disease is pneumonia? It is the infection, infection of the lung tissue. Sometimes it is bacterial pneumonia, sometimes it could be viral. Alveoli fill up with pus. Alveoli is like the grapevines. The lung has like a grapevine type of gas exchange place. The mucus and other liquids, oxygen and carbon dioxide are not exchanged. Lung is the place where the business happens. Oxygen is taken into the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood is taken out from the mouth and nose. That is called gas exchange, which does not occur in pneumonia. Caused by the bacteria and viruses and aspiration or immobility. These are the causes of pneumonia. Can cause serious illness and result in death. But Therefore, pneumonia is a life-threatening condition. Symptom of pneumonia, fever, shaking chills, painful cough, chest pain, and rapid breathing and pulse rate are increased. See the sign and symptom for the exam. Definitely this question will be there. Cyanosis, it's a bluish color in the leaves or nail beds or in the ear lobes. These are the area we have to check the circulation. Sputum is clear, green, yellowish, or rust color depending on the cause, and person is always confused. So thank you for your uh, patience. We finish this second part of the lecture here. We will see you in the third part. Thank you. Have a good day.